was hit by a car in South Africa about a little few months before Rabbi Shalom died. And uh, as a true Yankee, I walked right into the middle of the street, was looking the wrong way, bam. And I was very lucky not to, that, I was very lucky that, that Baruch Hashem, it was fine. And a few months later, uh, Rabbi Feldus Niftar, he died. And I had Masechet Mako, interestingly enough. And I initially started it to, um, to kind of do it on the, you know, the anniversary of my own falling. And for one consequence or another, I get the honor of doing the CM on his yard site. Um, I spent the afternoon in my friend Michael Cohn's kitchen finishing the last few pages of it. And in my own head, you know, in my, my, my wild head, there's so many um, correlations between the life of our dear friend, Sadik, our Moyle, our comrade. Um, I'll do my best to finish the last story, the last Agadita in the Gemara, and I'll try and do it in the way that Rabbi Feld would have done it. Because Rabbi Feld always taught me one of the things, aside from bringing me into the Coven of Avraham, it is in my, my late 20s, I never had the privilege to do it as a youngster. Rabbi Feld brought me in, and what we say when, when you open the hole for me, the size of the pen, what's the, the verse maybe? I'll give you so kind of give. I did this with Rabbi Feld, thank God, I have a great privilege to do this. So Rabbi Feld, Feld, my friend, I hope I do you honor. Uh, so at the end of the Gemara, we have a very famous Shagata that many of you probably have, have heard of. There were four very well-known um, Tanayim. The Chavod HaHayeh, Rabban Gamliel, Rabbi Eleazar, Ben Azariah, the Rabbi Yeshua, the Rabbi Akiva, the Chalken, the Derech. Once Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Eleazar, Ben Azariah, Rabbi Yeshua, and Rabbi Akiva were traveling on the road after the destruction of the temple. Vishmo Kalmane Shel Rame Miflata. And they heard the sound of the Roman crowds in the plaza of Rome. Merachok Mae Vebe Shari Mae Mimil. 120 mil away, 120 miles. Um, and they started to weep. Rabbi Akiva but Rabbi Akiva was smiling, he was laughing. Ambru Lo, they asked him, For what reason are you smiling and why are you laughing? Amr Lahem, Bochim, he replied to them, "Why are you crying?" And and Amulo, uh, they answered him, "Halalu kashim shemat tevim leatzvim vekatarim lavadot chachavim v'shavin bata v'chashachet." These heathens who bow down to idols and burn incense to idolatry live in security and calm. And we, the temple, which is the footstool of our God, is consumed by ash and fire. Why, why, should, why, why, should, why should we not weep? Rabbi Akiva then explained why he smiled in the face of tragedy. Omer Lehem, he said to them, For this very reason I am smiling. For such as this, for those who transgress his will, that they, they dwell in such security and calm, for then those who will do his will, how much more so, how much greater the reward do they expect? On another occasion, our sages, the previous stages were coming up to Yerushalayim and they saw the destruction of the temple. And they reached Mount Scopus, where they were able to see the city of Jerusalem in destruction, and they rent their garments. And when they came to the Temple Mount, they saw the fox emerging from the Holy of Holies. And they started to weep. Rabbi Akiva Mezachek. Rabbi Akiva laughed, Omer Lo, and he said to them, 
For what reason are you smiling? And what, what reason? And then he said to them again. He replied to them, "What reason are you weeping?" Omer lo, makum shachatuv ba. And he says in the Torah, "V'zacher hakarav yamot." They said to him, "The place about which it is written, the non-kohen who comes close shall be put to death." Achshav shalim chalchu ba. If the foxes are walking about there, should we not weep? Rabbi Akiva explains why he's smiling. Omar al he said to them, For this very reason I'm smiling. It is written, I will summon trustworthy witnesses to testify for me. The prophet Uriah, the Kohen, and Zechariah ben Yerachabehu. Vachim ma enin Uriah as well as Zechariah. Now, what connection does Uriah have with Zechariah? Uriah mekadosh rishon v'Zechariah mekadosh sheni. Uriah prophesied during the to the first temple, and and Zechariah prophesied during the second temple. Why then are they mentioned together? Rather, the two prophets are mentioned together because through doing so, Scripture made the prophecy of Zechariah dependent upon the prophecy of Uriah. But Uriah, Kativ, the prophecy of Uriah is even Lachen Gagolachem, Tzion, Sade, Tachadash. Therefore, because of you, Tzion will be plowed like a field, as it states in the prophet of Micha. In Zechariah, Khatif, in the prophecy of Zechariah, it's written, Ad Yashbu Zachanim, Zachanim Barachavot Yerushalayim. Old men and old women will yet sit in the streets of Yerushalayim, Rabbi Akiva concludes. Ad Shalo Nitkama Nevato Shal Arya. As long as the prophecy of Uriah had not been fulfilled, I have feared that the prophecy of Zechariah would not be fulfilled. Now that the prophecy of Uriah has been fulfilled, and Yerushalayim and the Temple Mount are totally desolate, by Yodea Shanivuoto Shal Zechariah Mit Kamai, it is obvious that the prophecy of Zechariah will be will be fulfilled. Velashin Haze Amulo, they, Rabbi Akiva's colleagues, thereupon said to him in these word, words, Akiva Nechmatato, Akiva Nechmato, Akiva, you have confronted, comforted us, Akiva, you have comforted us. Hadran Allah Elohim Halokin Adran Allah Elohim Alokin Adran Allah Elohim Alokin Um I'm gonna say a few things here and do the Kaddish. If anybody would like to speak in the interim that'd be great.